Hi, this is Saud. Welcome to video part two of exploring the issue hardware and uh, testing. If you are not yet watched uh, video part one, then I advise you to do that, as this step will help you to follow what we are doing here. You can get the part one video under this video at the channel uh, channel link. In video part one, we have gone through the issue operation principles and uh, related that to the actual issue electronic board and uh, circuit. And here we have the setup to demonstrate practically the basic testing and uh, checkings of the of the issue board. Let's have explanation of the different parts on uh, this setup before uh, starting. This is the issue board and I have used the issue pinout uh, diagram to locate the different uh, required input outputs to the, to the issue and I have wired the signal directly on the corresponding pin on the board as you can see. This is the 12 volt input powering up the, the ECU, normally coming from the car battery. Uh, here we have the uh, 12 volt backup. It is normally permanent on, so it's directly connected to the battery. Uh, this is the toggle switch represent, representing the ignition switch act activation. So once the ignition switch is activated, the ECU is going to energize the control relay which will close the contact and is go it is going to supply the switched 12 volt to the issue as the main uh, uh, power uh, the 12 volt backup is on all the time and that will help the issue to do this uh, step in fact here we have two leds one is re representing the injector output and the other one is representing the uh, igniter output so this is connected to injector number one and this to the igniter, igniter number uh, one as well and uh, they are very useful to to monitor the activity activity uh, signal going to the uh, injectors and uh, and the igniters here we have the variable resistors uh, representing uh, this one is the throttle posi position signal and the other one is the air mass flow signal uh, and the expected output from these two is uh, uh, at 5 volt uh, magnitude and here we have the crank uh, signal input to the ECU and, and the other one is the cam pulses uh, input to the to the issue as well and I have developed this device it is a device based on uh, electromechanic uh, principle to generate a synchronized uh, uh, crank and uh, cam signal so it is capable to generate a crank signal and uh, uh, left side cam and uh, right side uh, cam signal uh, as well and as you can see based on the inputs uh, from uh, this device we are able to get the uh, injector and igniter outputs from the issue uh, uh, I can vary the speed of the rotation as well. Oh. The same way we can get these two signals, the crank signal and the calm signal by uh, using the function generator so 
let's uh, connect the function generator and continue the the testing i have connected the crankshaft signal input and the camshaft signal input to the function generator channel one and channel two uh, of course to get it right is, is is not always straightforward to get the right frequency to to get the issue responding uh, you you will need to adjust the frequency and the duty cycle the duration of the pulses plus the amplitude to, to, to get it uh, responding uh, right this this part some, sometimes is, is tricky you, you will need to uh, figure out what's the right uh, uh, settings for 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 uh, for each uh, issue to get the right respond let's start now the basic uh, uh, testing on on the issue the first step is to to have a visual uh, uh, inspection uh, on the board uh, the visual in inspection might help to look to locate some of the faults in fact uh, uh, sometime and then we will proceed and and check the power supply uh, regulator and the output from the regulator uh, going to the to the microcontroller I'll, I'll use this pin as a reference reference ground for our uh, measurements L let's check the input uh, supply to the power uh, regulator uh, it's supposed to be a 12 volt yeah this is okay 12 volt input and uh, 5 volt output is expected from this as this is uh, regulating and stepping down to 5 volt uh, DC yeah it's very close 4.97 which is yeah almost 5 volt so we'll check the VCC input yeah 4.85 almost there so the VCC input to the microcontroller is fine uh, with the microcontrollers we, we might have two VCC input one is VCC and the other one is the, the AVCC that is the analog uh, VCC and uh, both of them they're supposed to be healthy otherwise we'll not get things uh, working uh, and those two they might be uh, supplied from different sources so we will need to confirm both both of them are uh, available so this is the AVCC of this uh, microcontroller yeah it's fine very close so I can say that the power supply uh, side going to the microcontroller is, is, is okay H how I know the pinout of the microcontroller is uh, by using the data sheet of, of the microcontroller so uh, the data sheet will uh, will help to locate the uh, uh, basic pins like the power supply input uh, VCC AVCC that the ground uh, input the clock signal the reset signal these all are, are uh, important to know them as they can be a cause of uh, a malfunction but for the case of the general purpose input outputs of course that part depends on the program which is uh, loaded on the on the microcontroller so it's not really straightforward and, and, and easy to get them from the data sheet uh, so what I do normally I trace back from the input side all the way to the microcontroller to, to, to just locate that uh, input uh, in this side or also that's applicable to, to the output also uh, of, the, of the issue. The same way I have connected the oscilloscope uh, ground reference uh, to the same point of the issue uh, ground uh, and let's check now the other signals it is important to verify the clock signal to the microcontroller is uh, running
this is an important input to the microcontroller and in, in general it gives uh, it gives good indication that the, the system is live the, the crank input is coming to this IC as we can see this is the crank input uh, signal uh, and as per my checkings, because I could not get the data sheet of this uh, IC or any information about it, but uh, it indicates that it is conditioning the cam and, and crank uh, signal and, and, and it is shaping it uh, to the right shape. Uh, as we can see here, uh, this is the shape of the crank uh, signal input and uh, here we have the output uh, signal which is inverted in fact and, and it is uh, very well uh, square wave uh, uh, signal uh, sometimes it's not easy to get the data sheet of some of the, the ICs or of course we don't have the drawing also of the, the issue but that's not the end of the world because still we can uh, do something and manage to 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 understand the the setup uh, in somehow the crank output signal from uh, this ic it's been fed to the microcontroller at, at this input and as we can see the same signal is reaching there to the microcontroller uh, based on the other analyze also I found out that this IC it is uh, in fact uh, receiving the timing signal from the microcontroller uh, the microcontroller will do all the calculations ba based on, on the inputs and then it generates the timing signal for the for the igniters and this IC in fact is is, is getting that timing signal and then uh, based on that it produce the final outputs to the igniters which which is going to be fed as a signal to the driver uh, circuit of the of the igniter, igniter circuit this is the timing signal from the microcontroller going to the igniter uh, driver ic As you can see the same signal coming there and then the ignited driver IC is going to generate the output this output is going to be fed to the to these transistors and these transistors they're going to uh, boost and uh, amplify that signal and it will give the final output and the output after amplification is going to uh, go to the igniter coil as a as a final output through this pin So as we, we notice, and this is what we have mentioned before, that uh, the igniter uh, output driver, uh, it doesn't need to be uh, power output si similar to the injectors, because the, at the igniter coil uh, side, uh, we have a driving transistor there in the inverter circuit, uh, so it, what it required is only the uh, signal to drive the base of that transistor. The injector uh, injectors output from the microcontroller is uh, is fed to this IC. Uh, in fact, uh, I could not also get any uh, detail of this IC, but. Uh, it is it is clear that it is acting uh, as a buffer uh, circuit uh, to 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 uh, drive the the gate of the 
uh, output uh, power uh, transistors. So the, the input has been fed to, to this uh, IC from the microcontroller. And, and here we get the output. Which is going to be fed to the gate of this power transistor. And in turn, this uh, transistor is going to uh, amplify the, the, the signal. And it will give the final output to the, uh, to the output pin of the ECU. And this output is, it is the one which is uh, going to drive the, the, the injectors. I'm going to vary the signal coming from the throttle position sensor input. And we will see the effect of that on the injector signal. So, as you can observe, the duty cycle of the signal is changing slightly. Of course, this will change the amount of fuel going to the engine. This one, of course, is a working issue, but with non-working issues, still you can follow the same steps to uh, locate the, the fault. You can start by doing a visual inspect inspection on the board, which easily might indicate the fault if it exists. Checking the output uh, power from the re regulators and the healthness of the power, the clock signal to the microcontroller and the reset signal also, if it is applied or not, the signal going to the output drivers, checking the status of the capacitors, uh, checking if there is any broken uh, uh, track on the PCB. The last point I would like to mention is the signal shapes, which we have seen them during this demonstration, they are not the ideal signal we expect to see them with a running issue installed on a car engine. Many other inputs, they are not connected currently to this issue. The idea of this, it was just to demonstrate the way how to trace the signals. Thanks for watching and, and all the best.